Okay guys, the fun starts in this video because we're going to be doing our CSS now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file. So command or control N and I'm going to save that file. I'm going to make a new folder called CSS and inside of that CSS folder I am going to save my styles.css. Now I could do a whole bunch of CSS but before I do that I need to come over here and link that CSS file over. So let's come here and do link href is equal to and rel is equal whoops is equal to so the href is where can it find my file so it can go into the CSS folder and inside there it will find styles.css and my rel is the relationship we have to tell it that this is a style sheet. Save that and well refreshing right now won't actually do anything but now we can start doing stuff and if you're not sure if you did anything right uh, you could just come and change the color of your the background color of your body make it red and see what happens and I, it looks like I did things properly so great now I don't want my background color to be red but I am going to change my background color I've got a few colors pre-picked out here um, so you're free to use these ones I'm using CDE7BO so if you're following along you can use these or you go find a color picker and uh, come up with your own color scheme. Now what I want to do is um, let's change a few other things. I'm going to use CSS font stack. So you might remember this. I want to switch over to Century Gothic. It has pretty good support and through the font stack. Let's copy that. And let's change the font family. So refresh, so font family. And I'm just pasting this since I copied it from CSS font stack. But you might uh, want to be using something uh, on your own, so font family is how you can choose your font family. I'm also going to change my font size, make it a little bit bigger, 18 pixels. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now let's come and fix up my header region over here. So I'm going to choose my header or select my header. So I rate header, that's my selector, and it's selecting my header right there. So we'll save that and uh, let's come and change the background color of this area too. And I'm going to be going with a 59594A, which is a dark brown. There we go. Now, right away, we see a little bit of a weird thing going on. When I do that is we have this space all around here. Uh, the space on the top is coming from the margin on the text, but there is a space on the sides here, too. What's causing this is all of the browsers by default give us a margin of 8 pixels all the way around. It puts this margin all the way around, so by default our text isn't touching the side. So if you're not going in putting a lot of CSS in there, you can actually read your text instead of having the text nudged up right on the edge there. Uh, now most websites you will be building, if you keep up with this, is going to need this in your CSS, a margin of 0 to get rid of that. We don't want that space there. Now up here we have a bit of an issue, but that's easy enough to fix. I'm just I want to add some padding, so I'm going to do padding, top of 50 pixels, padding bottom of 50 pixels, and there we go. My heading is taking shape. Now the padding is much bigger here, so I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to go down to inspect. And if you're in uh, other browsers, you'll find something similar. And I can see here is my header, and I can see that blue box is the content inside, and the green bars is the padding that I just put on there. And right there is my H1, and my H1 has that default margin on the top and the bottom that we looked at already. So that margin is adding, so this is 50 pixels plus the margin top, and then my margin bottom plus the 50 pixels, so it is bigger than the 50. Uh, there's a few things I want to do. Also, let's uh, throw a text align on here. Text align center. That's better. And let's change our color to white. So that's FFF. And one more thing. Let's do a text transform of uppercase. There we go. My first website. It's really there. 
Uh, and now let's come down to this area down here. So if you remember there, we have our div class container. And then inside of our container, we have a section and an aside, which is our sidebar. So here's our section, and then right here is our side. And obviously, we don't want them one on top of the other. The whole point is to put them next to each other. But first, let's just start off with our container. So dot container, select my class of container. And the first thing I'm going to do is give this a width of 80%. I want it to be 80% the width of my screen. And I can see that it's working. It's holding my content. Uh, it's stopping it at the 80% mark, but I want it in the middle. So my margin of zero top and bottom and auto on the left and the right. So it automatically calculates my margins and it holds my content in the middle. And as far as my container goes, that's pretty much all I need to do. Um, so now we can jump down and look at these two here. So I have two different things here. I have my section. So I have a section and I have my aside. I want my section to stay on the left side and I want this to pop over on the right. So let's take my section and I'm going to do um, a float left and then I'm going to take this and do a float right because this is what everyone does we know floats are what we need to move things around but it doesn't quite work the way you might have expected when you just do that uh, this is moved over to the right my footer oddly enough has come up over here um, so a lot of weird stuff has happened I want this to be up here so the problem is this is taking up all the space because this is taking up all the space this can't move up next to it. So when I'm floating something to the left, if it has big paragraphs or something in it, I do also need to tell it how big to be. Now I'm gonna do a width on here of 70%. This is not 70% of my screen. It's going to be 70% of my container. And my container is at 80%, so it's 70% of this 80%, and maybe that's kind of weird, but I see that all of a sudden my sidebar has the space to slip in there. And just for consistency's sake, let's say a width of 25% on my sidebar or my aside. The reason I'm doing 25% and not 30 is just so we do end up with a bit of a space between them. Um, I don't want them stuck to one another. I want to give a little bit of breathing room between the two. Now last but not least, I have this here. And this is causing me some problems as well. It's here and I need to get it down below. So let's go and select my footer. And on my footer, I want to give this a clear both. And that will allow it to jump down to the bottom. Sweet. On my footer, I will also give it a background color. Of 72. 286A0. Let's give this a little bit of padding. Say 50 pixels top and bottom, 0 left and right. We'll do another text align center. Whoop, I made a mistake there. There we go, text align center. And uh, I want to move it down a little bit. So on this section here, let's just add a margin bottom of 100 pixels just to give it some breathing room. And why not also give it a margin top? Uh, I could put a margin top on here of 100 pixels. The only problem is it's going to move this down, but it won't move that down. So that's not quite what I want. So what I'll do is on my header, we can add a margin bottom of 100 pixels. And that will give us that margin on the bottom of this whole header so it pushes all of my content down. And basically that's it. It's nothing too amazing looking, I'll give you that. Um, but it, it's if you can create a layout like this, you're pretty much on your way to being able to make 
a pretty normal layout. Uh, you know, most websites are using some variation of this. You might have three columns instead of two columns. You'll have a few more colors in there, some pictures in there. You know, lots of fine tuning and playing around with things and a lot more learning to go. This isn't the end by any means. It's just, just the beginning. But this is the basics of most websites these days. A couple of things that are floating around, a clear, then some background colors, some padding, and you got yourself a nice looking website. So uh, that's it guys. I really hope you liked it. And um, if you have any questions, I did go a little bit fast through this, but I just wanted to show you, you know, how easy it is really to make a good looking layout. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below. If you liked either this video or the whole series, hit the thumbs up. Make sure you let everyone else know you liked it. And things are going to be going in a bit of a different direction now. We're going to be pushing things and looking at some more interesting concepts and doing some really fun stuff. So if you want to keep following along with all of that, please subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. So that's it. That's the end of the series. It was a long one. I really hope you liked it as much as I enjoyed making it. Take it easy, guys.